Monster Hunter World Iceborne's endgame can be a challenge for the best of hunters, but with the right weapons and builds, even endgame tasks can be easily achieved. I'm Darkblade and we're back with even more amazing builds for Monster Hunter World Iceborne. In this episode we're going to be taking a look at endgame builds for the Dual Blades. The Dual Blades are a fast defensive weapon, able to dance around monsters and perform flurries of attacks. Now whilst these attacks individually and anything to write home about, when you take into account the long combos that the dual blades can perform, it means that the damage with these weapons can really rack up. On top of that it has access to various modes, enhancing its offensive capabilities but also giving it access to unique fast dodges, enabling a hunter to get out of the way of incoming attacks quickly, allowing them to continue their assault again. Also, much like the bow, the dual blades are a weapon that benefit from elemental and element weapons thanks to their long combos and the number of hits during a combo. The builds I use for the dual blades are again offensive based builds, utilising elements, elements and more. A disclaimer for this series though, these builds are aimed for endgame hunters, having completed the main story and having access to all armours and weaponry the game has to offer. A large jewel collection is also desired but you can always swap out jewels here and there if you don't possess the ones that are shown in this video. So the first build I use is the Stamina Cap Up build. This makes use of the Stamina Cap Up set bonus, increasing our maximum stamina, which is a key ingredient in the Dual Blades playstyle. With the high stamina, we're able to stay in demon mode for longer, which enhances both our defensive and, more importantly, offensive capabilities. This build also makes use of the critical element set bonus and works with any elemental weapon. So for this build, you need the Folgor Helm Beta, the Rhyme Guard Mail Beta, Rhyme Guard Van Braces Beta, Folgor Coil Beta, and the Garuga Greaves Beta. I'm also using a Frost Charm 5, although you can replace this to match whatever element you are using. And for my weapon, I'm using Untouched Hell which are the Velcana Dual Blades, to which I've only gone with Affinity Increase augmentations on them. Now when it comes to the jewels, you have a decent amount to play around with. Unfortunately, some of these are quite rare, so you may have to adjust them here and there. First of all, I've gone for Handicraft Jewels to give us a decent chunk of purple sharpness. I've then gone for Vitality Jewels for the Health Boost skill, a Frost Jewel to max out the Ice Attack skill. Of course, if you are using a different element, replace this Frost Jewel to match whatever element you are using. I've then gone for Expert Jewels for some Critical Eye, a Tenderizer Jewel to max out Weakness Exploit, a Sharp Jewel for Protective Polish, an Enduring Jewel to max out the Item Prolonger skill, and some Sprinter Jewels to give us some points in the Marathon Runner skill. As for the jewels in the mantles, these are down to personal preference, to which I've gone for expert jewels, attack jewels, and a sprinter and slider jewel. So if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina, which will be 200 health and 200 stamina when you're on a hunt and taking all your relevant consumables. You have an attack of 399 with a decent chunk of purple sharpness. You have 50% base affinity, which can be 100% when you're attacking monster weak points that have been tenderized first with an elemental rating of 350 and as for your defense you'll have a decent defense of 893 that is strong against thunder and ice but unfortunately weak to the other elements. As for the skills you have the following, you have ice attack level 6, ice attack increases the ice rating and damage of this build and if you were to use a different element then you would replace this with fire attack, dragon attack, so on and so forth. You have critical eye at level 6 which can be potentially level 7 when we're wearing our mantles. Critical Eye increases our base affinity by a set percentage. You have Health Boost level 3, potentially giving us that maximum health of 200. You have Weakness Exploit level 3. Weakness Exploit is a useful skill that allows you to have increased affinity when you're attacking monster weak points. And should these weak points be tenderized through Clutch Claw attacks first, this increase to your affinity is even higher. At level 3 it can be potentially an extra 50%. You have Handicraft level 3, increasing the sharpness of this build. You have Quick Sheath level 3, this is a byproduct of the gear, it's not really needed on this build, but it does allow us to sheath our weapons quickly. You have Item Prolonger level 3, Item Prolonger allows buffs from items to remain active for longer periods of time, and this also works with Protected Polish, which we'll talk about in a minute. You have Marathon Runner level 2, which can potentially be level 3 when we're wearing mantles. Marathon Runner reduces the stamina drain when we're in demon mode. You have Flinch Free Level 1, a byproduct of the gear, but helps resist minor tripping and knockbacks. You have Protected Polish Level 1. Protected Polish is a wonderful skill that allows you to put a protective coating over your sharpness gauge after you sharpen your weapon, preventing any sharpness loss for a small duration of time. However, this combined with Item Prolonger allows you to increase the amount of time this Protected Polish remains over your sharpness gauge. 
and as for the skills related to your mantles, you have attack boost level 1, increasing the raw attack of this build, and affinity sliding level 1. Affinity sliding is a very useful skill to the dual blades as it is a weapon that can really make use of sliding attacks, to which after you perform a sliding move, you'll gain a bonus 30% affinity for a short duration of time. As for the set bonuses, you have two of them. First of all is the Valkana's Divinity Critical Element. This increases the elemental portion of our attacks when we crit a monster. So we will be doing more elemental damage when we crit the monster basically. You also have Anjanath's Dominance Stamina Cap Up, increasing our maximum stamina to that potential 200. So there you have it. As you can see, it is a little bit of a Jack of All Trades build with plenty of DPS options and skills that can benefit the dual blades. But of course, every build has its pros and cons. The biggest pro for this build is its jack of all trades like I just mentioned, it's an all rounder build. So whilst it may be a build that doesn't have the highest DPS, it makes up for it by utilising other skills such as stamina cap up, marathon runner and more. On top of that it's a build that can also use any element. If you're up against a monster that requires a different elemental weapon, you can easily swap out the untouched hell for something else. Just remember if you do so to quickly swap out the frost charm as well as the frost jewel. And the final pro is it's a good build for if you haven't updated the game and thus don't have access to Rajang, Stygian Zenoga, Safi Jiva and so on. But unfortunately every build has its cons. The main biggest con for this build is its unfortunate reliance on some of the rarer jewels. Now you can get away with this by using different weapons. If you're able to get a hold of weapons that don't require handicraft, you can replace the handicraft vitality jewels for something else that has vitality. And the other con that stands out is unfortunately when it comes to its defenses, it doesn't really have any strong elemental defenses. But of course you can always counter that with the various mantles in the game. But nonetheless, this is a good build to try out if you're starting off with the dual blades or want something that's a little bit of an all-rounder build. Which brings us on to the next build I use, which is the true critical element build. The dual blades are another weapon that can really make use of elemental weapons, and thus the true critical element skill comes into play, allowing for an incredibly high elemental DPS build. So for this you'll need the Golden Noon Helm Beta, the Silver Soul Mail Beta, the Silver Soul Braces Beta, the Silver Soul Coil Beta, and the Silver Soul Greaves Beta. I'm also using a Worm's Bane Charm 5, and for my weapon I'm using Death Row, which is the Ebony Adogaron Dual Blades which I've added elemental up augmentations and then you'll have an augmentation of your choice to which I've gone for a defense increase. Now I should say that the death row dual blades aren't exactly the best dual blades out there in terms of stats but sometimes in Monster Hunter World you have to go with the weapons that you have a personal fondness of. I feel that the death row dual blades are one of the better looking dual blades in the game and I love the way they move and look so I've made the build work around them. But anyway when it comes to the jewels you've got a few to play around with here to which I've gone for Tenderizer Jewels to max out the Weakness Exploit skill, Sprinter Jewels to max out the Marathon Runner skill, Expert Jewels to increase the critical eye of this build, a Slider Jewel to give us that Affinity slide in, Vitality Jewels to max out the Health Boost skill, and finally I've gone for a Dragon Jewel to max out the Dragon Attack skill of this build. As for the Mantle Jewels, these are down to personal preference. For the Rocksteady Mantle, I'm using Protection Jewels for Divine Blessing, and with the Evasion Mantle, I'm using Destroyer Jewels to give us a few points in the Part Breaker skill. So, if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina, which would be 200 health and 150 stamina when you're on a hunt and taking all your relevant consumables. You have an attack of 357 with white sharpness. You have 50% base affinity, which will easily be 100% so long as you're attacking monster weak points that have been tenderized through clutch claw attacks first. You have an elemental dragon rating of 600 with high elder seal. And as for your defense, you have a strong defense rating of 954. That's incredibly strong against fire and dragon but unfortunately weak to the other elements. As for the skills you have dragon attack level 6, this increases the dragon rating and damage of this build. You have critical eye level 6, slinger capacity level 5. Slinger capacity is a byproduct of the gear we're wearing. It basically allows a hunter to carry more slinger ammunition. You have health boost level 3, critical boost level 3. Critical boost is a byproduct of the gear we're wearing again, but when we crit a monster it will increase the raw damage portion of our attack but unfortunately it won't do anything for the elemental portion. You have Weakness Exploit level 3, Marathon Runner level 3, Windproof level 1, again another byproduct of the gear we're wearing. This helps resist minor wind effects and attacks. You have Affinity Sliding level 1, and as for your mantle skills, you have Part Breaker level 2, increasing the likelihood of breaking monster body parts, and Divine Blessing level 2, allowing us to potentially take reduced damage when we take a hit from a monster. 
But for the set bonus, you have the Silver Rathalos Essence, which is the main reason behind this build. This gives us the Slinger Ammo Capacity when we're wearing the two-piece set, which allows the Slinger Capacity skill to increase from just level three to level five. And when you're wearing the four-piece set, you'll have True Critical Element. True Critical Element is just like the Critical Element mentioned in the previous build, but it increases the elemental portion of our damage when we crit a monster by a large amount. So as you can see, this is a very strong DPS focused build. In fact, it's a strong build all around, having a few quality of life skills that really benefit the dual blades. Having Marathon Runner and Health Boost definitely helps when it comes to endgame hunts. But the main reason for this build is its elemental damage output. Even though we may not be using the best dual blades in the game, this build can still bring down monsters incredibly quickly thanks to its high affinity, true critical element and crit boost. Now of course you can swap out the death row dual blades if you so want, if you want to use a weapon that does have a different element, but in which case remember to swap out the charm as well as the dragon duel. But as always every build has pros and cons. The biggest pro for this build is its sheer DPS output, able to bring down monsters quickly so long as you are taking into account their elemental weaknesses. On top of that it's a build that can use any element again by simply swapping out the weapons, charm and that single duel. And then finally when it comes to pros it definitely is a build that can utilize quality of life skills that the dual blade utilizes in the form of marathon runner, affinity sliding, health boost and more. But unfortunately every build has its cons. The biggest con for this build is unfortunately the weapons we're using they have low raw attack. Now you can counter this slightly by using different weapons but then you may run into other issues in the form of handicraft issues. So unfortunately the other con is this build really only works with weapons that don't actually require any additional handicraft. Personally I would recommend Death Row, the Bayo Hatchets which are the Beotodus dual blades or the Wunder Kirins which are the Kirin dual blades. These are examples of dual blades that don't really require any additional handicraft to increase their sharpness and they already come with a decent amount of white sharpness which benefits this build. But regardless, so long as you're comfortable with the weapons you are using, this build can rip through monsters very fast, so long as you're taking into account their elemental weaknesses. That brings us on to the next build, which is the true critical status build. This build utilizes element weapons, as well as the gold raffian set that gives us that true critical status, as well as increased survivability, thanks to having divine blessing. This is also gonna be a unique build that shows off the free element skill, which I don't normally use when it comes to melee weapons in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. So for this build you'll need the Golden Loon Helm Beta, the Golden Loon Mail Beta, the Shara Ishvalda Braces Beta, the Golden Loon Coil Beta and the Golden Loon Greaves Beta. I'm also using an Awakening Charm 3 and for my weapon I'm using the Rex Chain 2. Now again this may not be the best but I've gone for it for look reasons as I love the way the Chainsaw Dual Blades look. As such it's a blast base build. Now the Rex Chain 2 augmentations, you can have quite a lot of them, to which I've gone for Affinity Increase Augmentations, a Slot Upgrade Augmentation, and then Status Effect Up Augmentations. As for the custom mods, I've gone for a combination of Attack Increase as well as Affinity Increase to counter the negative affinity that the Tigrex Dual Blades normally comes with. Now as for the jewels, you have a decent amount to play with here. First of all, I've gone for Vitality Jewels for that increased health boost. I've then gone for Tenderizer Jewels to max out the Weakness Exploit skill, Sprinter Jewels to give us that Marathon Runner skill, Expert Jewels to give us some Critical Eye, a Critical Jewel to max out the Crit Boost skill, a Sharp Jewel for Protected Polish, and a Blast Jewel to increase the Blast attack on this build. As for the Mantle Jewels, I've gone for Refresh and Expert, and then Blast Jewels. So if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina, which will be 200 health and 150 stamina when you're on a hunt and taking all your relevant consumables. You have an attack of 403 with a decent chunk of white sharpness. You have 50% base affinity, which will easily be 100% so long as you're attacking monster weak points that have been tenderized through clutch claw attacks first. With a blast rating of 310, with a strong defense of 919, that is strong against fire and dragon, but unfortunately weak to the other elements. As for the skills, you have Critical Eye level 7, you have Divine Blessing level 5. This vastly increases the chance of taking less damage when we take a hit from a monster, adding to this build's survivability. You have Health Boost level 3, Free Element level 3. Free Element allows weapons that have hidden elements or elements to become active. So normally the blast rating for this build would be hidden and thus it wouldn't be active, but thanks to Free Element at level 3, it allows us to fully make use of the blast element with this build. Anyway, you have Critical Boost level 3, Weakness Exploit level 3, Marathon Runner level 3, Blast Attack level 2, which can be 
potentially level 4 when we're wearing our mantles. Blast attack increases the blast rating and build up of the blast element with this build. You're a protected polish level 1, stamina surge level 2 while we're wearing our mantles which increases how quickly our stamina recovers over time and you have attack boost level 1. As for the set bonuses, you'll have the Gold Raffian Essence. With the two set bonus, you'll have the Divine Blessing Secret, allowing the Divine Blessing skill to get to that maximum of level 5, when normally it can only get to level 3. And more importantly, you'll have True Critical Status when you're wearing the 4-piece set. True Critical Status increases abnormal status damage, so Paralysis, Poison, Sleep, Blast, when landing critical hits. You also gain additional build-up on these critical hits too, ultimately allowing for more Blast procs. But there we have it, as you can see it is a little bit of a quirky build, it may not be the most meta out there at all, but it definitely has strong damage and defences. Thanks to Divine Blessing at level 5 and health boost, you're able to take most hits from endgame monsters and be able to survive them quite easily. On top of that, it's also a build that has decent offence. The Tigrex Dual Blades have strong high raw attack, which in unison with the high affinity and crit boost means that we're going to have a strong raw attack output with this build and this coupled with the blast explosions means that monsters should go down quite quickly so long as we're taking into account their ailment weaknesses. But of course, as always, builds have pros and cons. The biggest pro with this build is it's a wonderful build that can make use of ailments. Through this they're able to deal out a lot of damage, whether it's from the explosion procs from blast weapons, damage over time effect from poison weapons, uninterrupted window of damage output through paralysis weapons, or carefully choreographed wake up attacks Thanks to sleep weapons, whatever you choose, this build will work well for if you like to deal damage with ailment weapons. On top of that, this is also a build that really has high survivability, and this is all thanks to Divine Blessing. Having this at level 5, coupled with the health boost at level 3, like I said, allows you to take a hit without fear of carting. And the final pro is that it's a build that can work with any ailment weapon. Now, even if you swap to an ailment weapon that requires handicraft, you can normally swap out the Awakening Charm for a Handicraft Charm so you gain that increase in sharpness. Just remember to swap out the Blast Jewels to match whatever element you are using. But unfortunately every build does have its cons, to which I would say this build really only works well when a monster is susceptible to whatever element you are using. And unfortunately the last con, which is a little bit of a odd way of looking at things, is with Divine Blessing it can be dangerous at times as you can get too overconfident and at one time that divine blessing doesn't kick in, you could have lower than normal health, which can result in a faint. So don't get cocky with this build. But regardless, this is a fun build to use and it's perfect for anyone who likes to use ailment dual blades. Which brings us on to the next build, which is the Handicraft True Critical Element build. This build makes use of dual blades that require Handicraft to be at their best. So again, it's another high DPS elemental build. So for this you'll need the Silver Soul Helm Beta, the Silver Soul Mail Beta, Silver Soul Braces Beta, the Silver Soul Coil Beta and the Garuga Greaves Beta. I'm also using a Flood Charm 5 and for my weapon I'm using the Jira Keen Blades 2 which are the Jira Todas Dual Blades. These have an Infinity Increase Augmentation, Elemental Up Augmentation and a Slot Upgrade Augmentation attached to them. They also have a combination of Elemental and Affinity Increases when it comes to their custom mods. As for the builds, you have a lot to play around with here, to which I've gone for Expert Jewels for some Critical Eye, a Stream Jewel to max out the Water Attack of this build, Handicraft Jewels to increase our Sharpness, these are coupled with some Vitality Jewels for the Health Boost, I've then gone for Tenderizer Jewels for that Weakness Exploit, a Sharp Jewel for Protective Polish, and finally a Sprinter Jewel to give us a point in the Marathon Runner skill. As for the Mantle Jewels, I've gone for Sprinter Jewels and Evasion Jewels. So if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina, which will be 200 health and 150 stamina when you're on a hunt and taking all your relevant consumables. You have an attack of 386 with white sharpness. You have 50 base affinity, which can easily be 100% so long as you're attacking monster weak points and you've tenderized those weak points first through clutch claw attacks. You have a water rating of 570 with a strong defense that is incredibly strong against fire and dragon, but unfortunately weak to the other elements. As for the skills, you have Water Attack level 6, increasing the water rating and damage of this build. You have Critical Eye level 6, Handicraft level 5, Windproof level 3, Health Boost level 3, Critical Boost level 3, Weakness Exploit level 3, Slinger Capacity level 3, Marathon Runner level 1, which can potentially be level 3 when we're wearing mantles, Protected Polish level 1, and Evade Window level 2 when we're wearing mantles. Evade Window increases the invulnerability window when we dodge monster attacks. 
You also have the Silver Raphalos Essence, Slinger Ammo Secret, and True Critical Element. So as you can see, this build is very, very similar to the second build featured, which was the True Critical Element build. The main difference being that this build works well with any weapon that requires handicraft, whether it be to get to white sharpness or purple sharpness, this build allows you to use that true critical element in conjunction with weapons that need that little bit of extra sharpness. It should be noted as well that the sharpness gauge will affect the elemental damage of a build so this is something to take into account. There are some dual blades out there that have incredibly high raw attack and elemental ratings at least for dual blades but unfortunately they have very poor sharpness and this build is aimed at utilizing those weapons. But every build does have its pros and cons. The biggest pro for this build is again its high elemental DPS, able to bring down monsters quickly so long as you're taking into account a monster's elemental weaknesses. On top of that again it's a build that can be easily customised as in you can easily swap out the weapons as well as the flood charm and the stream jaw for other weapons of a different element. And the other major pro for this build is its high handicraft rating allowing you to get weapons to white or even purple sharpness. But unfortunately this build does have major cons. The biggest being its reliance on some of the rarer jewels, namely the handicraft jewels. The other con for this build is it does kind of lack in some of the quality of life skills that the dual blades can make use of. Yes, okay, it can get Marathon Runner to level 3, but that's only when wearing mantles, unfortunately. But regardless, if you love elemental weapons and want to deal out some high amounts of elemental damage, then this is a build to consider. Which brings us on to our final build, which is the Guiding Lands dual blade build. This is a build for hunters going into the guiding lands and allows you to take on monsters regardless of their elemental or element weaknesses. With this build as well you should also be able to capitalize and come away with maximum loot. So for this you'll need the Kaiser Crown Beta, the Kirin Jacket Beta, the Kaiser Van Braces Beta, the Kaiser Coil Beta and the Garuga Greaves Beta. I'm also using the Handicraft Charm 4 and for my weapon I'm using the Soulfire Fangs Ruin. These have an affinity increase augmentation, health regen augmentation, and then a status up augmentation. Now, as for your jewels, you have a lot to play around with here, to which I've gone for jewels that are mandatory for the Guiding Lands. So I've gone for Destroyer Jewels to give us that maxed out part breaker skill. I've then gone for a Fortitude Jewel to give us the Fortify skill. I've then gone for a Geology Jewel to give us a point in the Geology skill. And then I've started focusing on DPS skills. These include Critical Jewels to max out the Crit Boost skill, Tenderizer Jewels to max out the Weakness Exploit skill, a Blast Jewel to max out the Blast Attack of this build, Expert Jewels to give us a little bit of Critical Eye, a Slider Jewel for that Affinity Sliding, and finally I've gone for a Handicraft Jewel to max out the Handicraft skill. As for the Mantle Jewels, I've gone for Sprinter and Physique Jewels. So if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina, which will be 200 health and 150 stamina when you're on a hunt and taking all your relevant consumables. You'll have an attack of 399 with a decent amount of purple sharpness. You have 50% base affinity, which will be 100% so long as you're attacking monster weak points that have been tenderized first. You have a blast rating of 170 and you have a decent defense of 903 that is strong against fire, thunder and dragon, but unfortunately weak to water and ice. As for the skills, you have Critical Eye level 7, Handicraft level 5, Blast Attack level 4, Health Boost level 3, Critical Boost level 3, Weakness Exploit level 3, Part Breaker level 3, which is vital for the Guiding Lands as it allows us to knock off monster materials more easily. You have Heat Guard level 1, this is a byproduct of the gear we're wearing, but helps prevent any damage when you're exploring hot areas such as the Lava Zones in the Elder's Recess or Guiding Lands. You have latent power level 1, this is a byproduct of the gear again. This basically is a buff that kicks in after you've been hunting a monster for a set amount of time or you take a certain amount of damage and when this kicks in you'll get increased affinity as well as reduced stamina depletion. You'll also have fortify level 1 which increases our attack and defense every time we faint up to a maximum of 2 times. You have divine blessing level 1, geologist level 1. Geologist is a vital skill in the Guiding Lands at the moment. It may be a bug, but every time you pick up monster material from the floor in the Guiding Lands, whilst you're using at least one point in the geologist skill, it allows you to loot that monster material twice. Anyway, you have affinity sliding level 1, haste and recovery level 1. This is a skill found on the weapons we're using. It's basically the Nergigante set bonus, allowing us to recover health when we attack a monster. And this does also stack with the health regen augmentation, allowing us to have some survivability with this build. And finally, when you're wearing mantles, you also have Marathon Runner level 2 and Constitution level 2. Constitution reduces the cost of actions that consume stamina, so dodging. 
you also have the set bonus Teostra's Technique, Master's Touch, preventing any sharpness loss when we crit a monster. And with this build having potentially 100% affinity, we should be able to keep purple sharpness on this build for the duration of the hunt. So as you can see, this build again is a little bit of an all-rounder build, making use of high DPS and survival skills. It's also a build that is perfect for the Guiding Lands thanks to utilising Partbreaker, Fortify and Geologist. But every build has pros and cons. The biggest pro for this build, of course, like I just mentioned, is it's an all-round build. Thanks to it being an all-round build and thanks to it making use of the blast ailment, which along with poison could be argued as ailments that you can pretty much take to any monster, it means that you don't have to constantly go back to camp and swap around your weapons or charms. It's also a build that doesn't really have to worry about handicraft. This is all thanks to Teostra's technique. So long as you're being accurate with your attacks and attacking monster weak points, rarely should you have to stop and sharpen your weapon. And finally, this build also has decent survivability, namely thanks to the health regen found on this build, thanks to haste and recovery coupled with the health regen augmentation. So it means you don't always have to stop and drink a potion to recover your health, you can just continue to assault a monster and get your health back that way. But unfortunately this build does have cons, the main biggest con for this build is its lack of dual blade quality of life skills. Yes, okay, they are kind of found on the mantles, but it would have been nice to have them in the build naturally. One suggestion, if you wanted to use this build outside of the Guiding Lands, would be to drop the Part Breaker skill in favour of maxing out the Marathon Runner skill. But, as always, the choice is up to you. But personally, I find this a great build to use in the Guiding Lands. And should you go up against a monster that is actually weak to blast, then this makes the hunt go even faster. But there we have it. Those are endgame builds that I use for the dual blades in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Now of course there are more endgame builds to come, especially with Safi Jiva and more content on the way, and as I always say you don't have to use what is shown in these videos, as most tasks in Monster Hunter World Iceborne can be taken on with any weapon or gear set. But anyway, I hope you found this video helpful or informative, and until next time, I've been Dataplate, bringing you endgame Iceborne builds for the dual blades in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, subscribe and like for more.